Today, we want to continue on our journey of using coordinates to make everything look like Rn. This is why we study vectors, start studying vector spaces in Rn, and then we just make everything look like Rn. We said Rn is so cool, let's just use that for everything. But to do that, we need, um, we need to describe vectors with coordinates. That's the way we get a vector in not Rn to look like a vector in Rn by writing its coordinates. When we want to start writing coordinates, we got to make sure that we have an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. That is, we have to make sure that we have a basis. We have to have a way to describe everything in your vector space. So our favorite example is to use uh, P, N. So in this case, I want to use P2 because I need a nice little three-dimensional vector space. So P2 is the vector space of polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2. Oh, I could have said at most 2. Oh, well. So the vectors in P2 are polynomials. The vectors in P2 are polynomials. So for example, a vector in P2 would be, say, P. And then to emphasize, even though I'm just using P, a, a lowercase p with a bar over it, which would be bold face if I was typing, um, I'm using my normal namings, naming strategy for vectors, bold face or a line over it. But to emphasize that we're dealing with a polynomial vector, I'm going to say P of t. So I'll say P of t is equal to 3 minus t plus 2t squared. This is a vector in P2. Because everything in P2 looks like a vector, uh, a polynomial of degree at most 2. So Q of t, I could write another one, say Q of t is 5 plus uh, t squared, is another vector in P2. So we're looking at these polynomials and we're thinking of them as vectors P2 because P2 is a vector space. So we want to make sure that we're clear about what the things in P2 look like. This is related to your linear transformations quiz. When a linear transformation maps R3 to R2, the images, so the range of T, is a bunch of vectors in R2. So they look like uh, little two by one matrices, two by one vectors. That's what things look like in R2. They look like an X1 and an X2. Things in P2 look like a, a C plus BT plus AT squared. So the vectors in P2 are polynomials. A standard basis for P, the standard basis, sorry, the standard basis for P2 is 1, T, and T squared. Remember what we want from a basis. We want a linearly independent spanning set. So remember what we want from a basis. A basis, a basis is a linearly independent spanning set. We need the spanning part because we want to cover everything. Everything in P2 has to be a unique linear combination of these three vectors. So the spanning part is everything in P2. has to be a unique linear combination 
of the vectors in a basis. When we have, when we want a base, what we want is a basis so that everything in the vector space can be written as a unique linear combination of the vectors in the basis. And with the vectors 1, t, and t squared, we can very easily, this is why it's the standard basis, we can very easily see why every polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 is a unique linear combination of these three vectors. So what we want is every vector, which is a polynomial, in P2 is a unique linear combination of the vectors in the basis. Every was supposed to be in green. Oh, no, orange, because everything in P2. Every vector in P2 is a unique linear combination of the vectors in the standard basis. What we can do is, since we have a basis and the vectors in the basis coming in, come in in order, we go 1, t, and t squared, we can write the coordinates of P relative to this basis. So the coordinates of P uh, let's say P of T relative to the standard basis. Here's our notation. I put P, oops, I put P in square brackets to indicate I'm turning P, uh, the vector, into a uh, column vector. And I just write how much of the one we need, how much of the T we need, and how much of the T squared we need. Those are the coordinates of P relative to the standard basis. This is how we think about P of t, a polynomial, as the coordinates, a column vector. What this means is that we have three of the first one, of the first vector in the basis, negative one of the second vector in the basis, and two of the third vector in the basis. So this means that P of t is three times the first vector in the basis minus one times the second vector in the basis plus two times the third vector in the basis. Similarly, if Q, so if Q of T is 5 plus t squared, then the, co the standard coordinates of q will be 5 1s, 0 t's, and 1 t squared. So we can say that these are the standard coordinates of q.
Notice that in both cases, I said these are the standard coordinates. of the polynomial. I didn't just call them the coordinates of the polynomial. I said they are the standard coordinates of the polynomial because we are writing the coordinates relative to the standard basis. We don't want to say the coordinates of the polynomial because coordinates are always relative to some basis. And there are other bases we could use for any given vector space. Let's pause the video here and take a look, then come back and take a look at some other bases for P2 and write coordinates relative to those bases. <laughs> 